everyone welcome to my channel my name is Donna from axeratech.com helping to take you on your journey from the classroom to the extra room with ease so today as you can see by the title and as you may have seen in the thumbnail I'm gonna be going through my list of courses the things that I had to do in order to attain my Bachelor of Science degree in radiography um, this was a four-year program which most people finish in five years especially if you had all these prerequisites to do when you didn't get any exemptions um, you know sometimes too life throws things at you some issues with family or whatever you may not be able to do a course at a certain time you might take a semester off a course might not be available or something like that but all that aside I'm just gonna get into the topics that I had to cover the courses I had to cover um, and just a general idea of what it entails I don't want this video to be too too long so let's get into it right away the first course and I'm running through these quickly because I went into detail on them in my last video where I discussed the prerequisites and what to expect for your clinical observation internship or practicum whatever you call it where you're at and the courses are introduction to physical principles introduction to anatomy and physiology with medical terminology fundamentals of writing college algebra mathematical methods communication in the workplace fundamentals of radiological science introduction to the study of society and the fundamental of research skills if you want to know what those courses entail before you get into your observation practicum do check out my previous video because i gave you an idea of what each thing was about and also a rundown on what to expect or what is the point of your clinical observation internship or practicum so we pass in those subjects straight now right so those are basically year one or like two semesters worth of courses it's a full-time program so there are about five or six actually yeah about five courses per semester in year two i would have done psychology for the health professional and psychology psychology you know healthcare and the relationship between those two and dealing with patients stuff like that dealing with loss grief Maslow hierarchy of needs and all of that right in addition to that I also covered science and instrumentation I actually want to do a video of the books that I use for my radiography program I might squeeze that in right after this one because I think it's cool to share you know but yeah science and instrumentation has to do with the science behind radiography learning how the equipment works learning how uh, x-rays are formed learning about SID and the way it affects your images you know source the image distance learning about things of a more technical nature when it comes to the the physics in a way behind the instruments that we use the x-ray tube and stuff like that right how a cassette works, what a cassette is made up of, what an image receptor, if, depending on what you want to call it, is made up of, right? Anyway, moving along, anatomy and physiology won, and anatomy and physiology was broken up into a lot of parts. So, you know, the body is a very extensive, complicated, complex thing. So, you know, in different things, we look at different systems and stuff like that you know we also looked at the x-rays and cross-sectional images that has to tie back in with the anatomy and physiology that we were learning at the time anatomy and physiology one started our radiological anatomy and physiology you know so we kind of went into detail more so concerning where radiography is concerned whereas in the pre-med or pre-clinical observation courses we dealt with more of the basics imaging procedures one so that's actually how to take the images how to take a chest x-ray your centering points all the factors technical factors your SID your grid size or your cassette image receptor size the anatomy of interest how to critique an image so in your imaging procedure courses you'll be discussing all of that right and you will also hear me repeat other things so in imaging procedure one we focus on things like chest abdomen and uh extremities upper extremities lower extremities basic views easy well 
After you pass through, you'll realize that was probably the easiest part of your program. So pay good attention to that, you guys. Professional skills in radiation medicine one, anatomy and physiology two. So we look at another system. I'm not gonna keep repeating myself, right? Radiation sciences, where you get into the nitty gritty. You get to learn about how X-rays are formed, the different types of X-rays, Compton scattering, photoelectric effect, all of that. You know, every everything that it comes with the physics behind radiation sciences. It's not an easy course. Yours might be broken up or it might just be one comprehensive course, but it will take a lot of work, so get your studying in, okay? That's all I'm gonna tell you. Imaging procedures two, clinical practicum one. Um, so this clinical practicum one had to do with what we learned in the previous semester. So we just finished everything that we needed to do while we were doing imaging procedures one. We were finishing up our observation clinical so now that we have covered all the theory for imaging procedures one we would have done the practicum in the next semester and that's how we did it right so you learn the theory then you go out and you do what you learn. science and instrumentation two um, different courses are different so in science and instrumentation one you might look at the basics of how x-rays work the different types of x-rays the different types of um, scatter and all of that and then in science and instrumentation too we might have looked at other technical things lord it's not coming to me right now but different like one two three four you get into different parts of the program you know you might have to look at mri ct get an understanding of how those modalities work as well right clinical practicum two basic anatomic pathology where we look at well pathology in relation to x-rays and cross-sectional images as well so whether it's bony pathology soft tissue related hereditary things like um congenital stuff as well you know so those are what we did in year two year three consisted of professional skills in radiation medicine two imaging procedures three si which is science and instrumentation where we looked at QA and QC, quality assurance and quality control when it comes to the equipment. Um, medical, digital imaging, introduction to pharmacology for radiological sciences, learning about contrast media and stuff like that. Science and instrumentation for imaging correlation with sectional anatomy. So this is like a fancy biology um, that has, y'all, I remember this class, not only was the lecturer, not the most exciting he was, he was very boring right but not only that we oh my god i feel so bad like I, okay i don't think you're gonna come across this video but I feel, I feel bad i didn't call any names but i guess whoever from my school will know who i'm talking about anyway so imaging correlation with sectional anatomy was so stressful and when you don't have an, a fun you know upbeat lecture it will be a drag so let's hope you get some great lectures okay but imaging correlation with sectional anatomy looked at ct images predominantly and actually it focused on slices of cadavers and if i could find some of those images i'm gonna get it for you guys so you all could know exactly the kind of images i had to study slice by slice from the head the tip of the head to the tip of the big toe, <laughs> it was, oh my god, it was stressful. Anyway, my battery is low, so I need to move on. Clinical practicum three, imaging procedures four, where we looked at accident and emergency trauma radiography, fundamentals of statistics, that's basically our next math course, right, but statistics. Clinical practicum four, overseas, so we got to go away, we connected with various hospitals, some people went to the US, I'm from Trinidad, some of us like myself we went right to our sister island tobago some people went in the caribbean you know you just get an external experience and you do your practicum away for a month leadership and ethics so yeah that was for year three and now year four quality assurance in medical imaging research methodology one and that's where you start to formulate your plans for your final research project and i have a video on that so if you want to learn what you need to know before you start a radio radiology research project because you don't want to get in stress and be confused and not know what to turn next you're kind of stuck if you want to avoid that and trust me it's very easy to get there 
check out my video on that and I'll give you some helpful tips on things to avoid and things to look out for for your research project. Clinical practicum 5 portfolio and external review computer tomography so CT we got a better understanding of that environmental issues and sustainability that was a basic one credit course you know that wasn't anything crazy imaging procedures five and strategies for health professionals research methodology two clinical practicum six and world issues in public health another one credit research submission and presentation and contemporary issues in science which was another one credit so that's a, a, a fair idea a quick idea of the courses that we had well that i had to cover within my program so just know that sometimes you'll see some reoccurring courses you might have part one part two part three if you're in an associate things will be a little more condensed um, you'll still basically learn what you need to know but I found that yes you could be a radiographer in places like the US maybe Europe doing an associate's degree a shorter program a year and a half or two years and you're finished but in my country we have to complete the full bachelor's in order to qualify as a radiographer so we literally look at every component of radiography and dialed it in and had to learn everything in my program an A was 90 or more B was 80 to 89 C was 70 to 79 D was 60 to 69 and we don't care about that because in order to pass your course overall we need to have no less than seven zero percent in the entire course some places might be a little easier where you could have passed with i don't know 50 percent but in that case the grading might be a little more difficult it depends right but i think that's all that i had to say so in total for my bachelor program it was a total of 141 credits and we had to complete a minimum of 1400 clinical practicum hours so each practicum had quite a lot of hours i think the smallest practicum had about 180 hours attached so you know it was a lot it was a lot but anyway yeah time is going so thank you so much for watching this video i appreciate all of you don't forget to subscribe give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend share it with a classmate like as i say we're helping ourselves but we could help other people too right as well as it would be nice to get the word out there and let's form our own little community because there aren't many of us here on youtube okay so thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next video bye